Hello and welcome to another painting video. So um, today I thought I would show you my approach to painting the new Sazakan dynasty Necrons. Um, they're the sort of really ancient dynasty. Um, they're also like based on the new sort of paints like your brasses and your bronzes and so on and so forth and they look a bit sort of knackered really because they've been buried for billions of years. Um, they're the Silent King's dynasty, um, as befitting him, I thought we'd um, we'd paint one up. So I've done my full force like this, but I thought you you guys would enjoy seeing how I I approach this. So all I've got here is a Necro Warrior, and he's he's primed in Chaos Black. Uh, he's trimmed him up, so on and so forth. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to come in with Screaming Bell, which is his little base colour. And we're going to give him a heavy dry brush. Okay, so let's pop our paint open. A heavy dry brush, okay, guys, and and we don't need to be massively accurate with this. I just want to cover the full miniature, okay. So I'm coming in. I use Screaming Bell um, because I like the sort of dark sort of undertones it gives the miniature. Um, I I really like the fact that these guys are buried for millions of years or whatever it is, and now the Silent King's come back. He's had enough, you know. <laughs> so you can be quite liberal with this coat. Get in on there, yeah. Um, I don't mind if the very sort of recesses in the miniature are staying black um, because it does sort of all tie in, so to speak, ties together when we get there. So, all I'm doing, make sure I'm, I'm covering the sort of top areas, his legs, so on and so forth. I'm using a big brush with this, and I don't mind if it's overspilling into the other areas of the Necron. Um, Necrons are quite forgiving with painting, really. Um, but yeah, I mean, I remember the first ever Necrons that I painted, and, and they were just silver <laughs> with an awful green rod in them. Um, there we go. So I'm, I'm, I'm going sort of in one direction now down the miniature. Um, it's just to prevent any sort of excessive sort of streaking with the paint. Um, let's try and just get in there just, just to make sure he's, he's as covered as he can be. So there we go. So that's your first stage. Okay. Screaming Bell. I love the model. So while that's drying. I'm just going to wash my brush off and we're going to think about the next stage. So, so what, we're gonna, what we're doing here essentially is we're building up the stages of metallics and the next stage we're going to come in with is the new base Rune Lord brass paint. Um, and this is it, this is a brilliant, a brilliant paint so let me just dry the brush off. It's a brilliant paint and it sort of matches the look of the Sazakan dynasty and, and Sarek, what's he called? Sarek? Sazarek. Sarek. The new, the, the, <laughs> I really need to learn how to pronounce these words. <laughs> Sarek. Sarek with a silent Z. Um, yeah, he's, he's the new Silent King, so um, yeah, that's where it's all coming from. And I imagine that's the colours, and I can't wait to get hold of that model. Uh, so, Rune Lord Brass, get a good shake. And then what I'm going to do here is essentially repeat the same process, um, but going across sort of like top down, if that makes sense. So, Rune Lord Brass paint, and, and again, I'm working into the bristles. It's not like a heavier dry brush, and I'm working down the miniature. Okay, make sure I'm getting it on his chest plate. Across the top of his legs. Yeah. And what I'm already doing here essentially is building up a colour gradient. Now for those of you lucky enough to have an airbrush, you can do this in the same sort of principle as your 45 degree spray essentially. But for those of us with a brush, there we go. Okay, so I built up that sort of gradual colour gradient. So obviously he's going to look dark from the bottom, which is what I want him to look like. Okay, so I'm just going to hit him one more time just to get those sort of really raised areas. Almost just with pure paint here, guys. Just just the, the pure paint. Okay, so top down. Build up that brass colour. Yeah. Top of his legs. 
there we go I'm happy with that okay so now we're gonna leave him to thoroughly, thoroughly dry and then we'll, we'll come in with a bit of a smaller brush and, and do the next stages okay so those first two sort of heavy drying brushes are dry um, the next stage that I do to them is his face plate and his shoulder pads and then any areas where he's sort of over skeleton has come away we're going to give those a different color sort of bobbles on the knees his joints things like that we're going to come in and we're going to color them in canoptic alloy now canoptic alloy is a, is a brilliant color um, give it a good shake uh, because it is sort of like a, a big a bit of a separator <laughs> and obviously now we're using a smaller brush and we're using our layer paints so we need to mix them in with a tiny bit of water on our palette okay dab of water and here we go so I want to pick out his shoulders like for pants uh, shoulder pants things like that. if you go one street directional particularly with metals just takes away the brush strokes Okay, bottom there. Don't forget just to tab those areas underneath there. Okay, so that's his shoulders done. Face plate. So they seem to have like a a different colour face plate going up to things like the Overlords and uh, I would imagine the Silent King himself will have a white face like a death mask which is pretty cool uh, for the Warriors it's dead easy just to do the dab there um, things like these bits so this is like his under skeleton areas yeah let's get them coloured in <clears throat> it just adds it's an easy way of adding a bit of variety to essentially a metal miniature is hey let's let's use a few different metal colours okay this side here so his whole arm is on display there so we're gonna do his full arm okay one from the bottom as well to make sure we get all those areas his eyes um his knees knee joins yeah once you get this down to a technique, I mean, I was batch painting these in twenties. Um, painting is very much about technique, but once you've got that down, you are you'll be amazed what you can produce and and how quickly you can sort of turn it out. And it's all technique. And I know there's skill involved. Obviously, there is. And I've painted for twenty plus years, um, but a lot of what I do is, is learn techniques for. Get an armies built, you know. I want to, I, I want to get them on the board. I want them to look decent, but you know, I um, I used to work within the industry um, in in sort of retail stores, and um, a lot of that was getting things painted up, and you know, within within the time frame. So a lot of what we did was figure out how can we make this look cool and 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 get it to a good standard still, you know. And a lot of it is techniques, um, so particularly with metals. I mean, I remember the first Necrons, they were just silver, you know, and you saw everyone just spread them silver and that was it. And, which is fine, you know, if you want to. But we did uh, sort of like white carapaces on them and, and sort of things like that. And they just looked a bit, bit you know, a bit, bit of interest, a bit different, you know. So I'm going in there as well into those joints. And so that's his, his body essentially done. The areas that I pick out in that silver, but also on his weapon. He's got the uh, spikes all Necrons have. <laughs> and then this blade here on the Warriors, I'm doing that metal. Okay, I don't think the the, the Warriors probably don't. And at the social status where they get some form of cool looking blade, are they? Not to say you can't do them. I've done a, a blade painting tutorial as well. If you want to add that to your Necron Warriors, you crack on, you know. Other side.
And obviously this is the same technique you'd use on a Gauss Reaper as well. There we go. So that's those sort of lighter silver areas picked out in the miniature. We're gonna let them dry, thoroughly dry now. Uh, when I'm batch painting, I do 20 of these and leave them all night to dry. Okay, but um, due to the magic of YouTube, I'll come back to you in the next stage in a second. Okay, so the uh, metallics are all now dry. Um, and we're now going to wash the whole miniature in Cryptek Arm Shade Gloss. Now, that's sediment, so I always shake this, these washes up. Okay, they really need, they need to be sure, you know, everything is in the pot for a reason, that's why I always say, and it, and it needs to be mixed together. Yeah, totally different colour now. Now what I'm going to do, I've seen, you, you can just apply this straight on if you want, but it's very dark. Um, so I'm going to put maybe three brush loads on there. And I'm going to mix a brush load of water into it. Okay, and now it's, it really is as simple as I'm just going to paint all the areas that, that I want to be metal. Um, okay, trying to avoid enormous pooling. Um, and we just move it about. Just move that wash around on your miniature, okay? Just make sure that we cover all of it. And this wash is brilliant. It really has that magic something. <laughs> I don't really know what's the best way of describing it. It sort of ties it all together. And it, it just makes your Necron look necrony yeah <laughs> you could probably have a lot, a lot better descriptive uh, descriptive sort of phrases than that but you know this is this is i think this wash is brilliant and this gloss wash as well you know so it sort of really helps metallics time together i need a bit more wash i'm just going to go a bit more on there a couple of dabs of water yeah yeah and don't be afraid to let the wash do a lot of work for you. Yes, as always, you you can blend things up and you know and all this sort of thing, and, that, and that's fine. And you know, and there's always you can do that. But when I I've got you know a hundred Necron Warriors to paint, I'm wanting to get them done. <clears throat> and this is the technique that I've sort of found to to do the new dynasty. So yeah, cryptic armor shade wash. It's gloss, um, all over the miniature. Okay, so straight away you can see what that's going to do, particularly on this like face plate and things like that. Um, I'm a little bit more on there. Um, I'm quite happy with that underneath there. Yep, yeah. and on the blade as well on the end. Okay, now we're going to leave them to to thoroughly dry. Um, that's high, really important, you know, after you've done any washes or anything like that, guys. Let's let the miniature thoroughly dry. Um, again, when you're batch painting, don't be afraid to leave things overnight. You know, do do one stage on 20 blokes and then, then move on to the next one. So I'm going to leave that to dry and then we'll come back and get the metals really popping and then we'll do sort of his gun and then final touches. Okay, so now that the, uh, the wash is dry, we're now going to go back over the top and gently highlight the metallic area. So I've got my uh, cryptic alloy. Uh, on my palette with a tiny bit of water and, and, and it's really easy this stage guys all I'm doing is the highest areas I'm just giving it a little 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 torch okay across the top of his arm yeah things like the blade so just towards the end of it and all this is gonna do is just sort of make that metal pop okay Lid there, so we'll, we'll do that, that area. And then we'll, on the blade, reverse him down the other side. I'm thinking where the light's gonna fall, so top there, top there, dot. Yeah, just along the edge, very, very edges of this. Okay, his face, I'm going to go across the top of his brow, and then up the side, yeah, down the other way, down there as well, touch on the sides, 
touch on the other side side of the brush on his armors on his uh, shoulder pads yeah down the back of here on the two raised areas and then side of the brush around the shoulder pad I'm going to draw a slight inward line there just to sort of emphasize the shape and there we go so that's the the metallics all highlighted up really really quick and easy yeah really simple it gives a decent effect as well though particularly on like the back and things like that okay so what we're going to do we'll just wash the brush off we're going to follow the exact same principle with the Ruben Lord Brass. Shake it up. <laughs> Tiny spit on my palette. Dab of water. And I'm going to come in with the Ruben Lord Brass. Okay. Now, this is sort of, again, think about the top of everything. So it's the top of his hand and down the front. Just get our brush done, there we go. And across the top of his arm, this joint here, this area here. Yes, yeah, so anywhere that is naturally higher, we're now coming in with this. I'm emphasizing the joins of his armor plates. I'm gonna go around this side here, top of his hand. I'm gonna come across and up there and there okay at this area and then going to melt that into there there's a point there's a point so I'm really just sort of picking out where the light might fall and hit this guy same principle that side there and then up the back yeah down the spine these sort of Hip bones that they have. The top there, going under that area there. Just sort of really, see, it just sort of makes the metal pop. That's what we're looking to do. It's here, for example, I'm going to go across the top there and there, up this highlight here, just to make that leg pop. Yeah. And it might be, at first you might think, well, you know, well, no, I'm adding all these highlights. and But it is, a, it is relatively simple to do. And it does just make the miniature just sort of come to life. Because metals are, you know, it can look cool. But we want it to look like metal. Like a, particularly like an alien metal or an alien alloy, whatever you want. And then we'll go into the back of his hand again here just to sort of emphasize that a bit more okay and then just around the sides there so that's going to be another sort of highlight point and there we go so we've sort of, that's the metal stages done that's all the metal sort of popping on the miniature we're going to let that thoroughly dry and then we're going to come in with some corvus black for his black stone on his chest and his gun okay Okay, so now that our metal is, is looking pretty funky, <laughs> we're going to come in with Corvus Black. And any areas that I'm going to essentially now do something else to need to be Corvus Blacked. So he's got a Blackstone Plate plaque in his torso, which is going to be black. The entirety of this gun, apart from these blades that we've done. And then he's got some wires underneath there. And this varies from sort of miniature to miniature, but the principle's the same on all of it. We're going to use some Corvus Black and essentially give these areas a, a base coat that we can then do something else to. Okay, like the gun. So like we've talked about sort of batch painting and things like that. So you've got to think if you've got all of your metal done on 20 guys, next day you can think, oh, I've only got half an hour tonight or whatever it is I'm going to call this black all the weapons in yeah and that's how you sort of build an army up relatively quickly it doesn't have to be I'm going to sit for 12 hours straight and paint 100 blokes it's not 
you know it's it's a hobby and it's to hobby your way and your enjoyment of the hobby is is your own you know so I like to to play with a fully painted army and this is well before there was any sort of victory points I you know ramifications with that um, I've always liked to paint my miniatures you know anyone that knows you knows me also I'll sort of vouch for that um, and it's just I don't know I find the painting relaxing I don't know about you what's your favorite part of the hobby you know tell me now hit me up in the comments tell me um, for me it's always been painting I don't know why <laughs> I guess I find it relaxing and rewarding as well you know because you can when you there's does no it doesn't beat the feeling of putting an army down and, and you don't need people saying oh wow you know oh, you're painting God um, it's more that feeling of being able to say yeah I've fully painted that army and and it looks cool and, and it's good when you meet it's like oh yeah that looks really cool you know how did you do that how did you do that so on and so forth and it just I don't know it just adds to the hobby and then you can say oh yeah I did this technique and this technique and, and then they come back with something new and that's what hobby's all about isn't it you know so that's his, uh, his, his ghost flare done going to his black stone on his chest I really like the mythology behind this uh, this dynasty. I'm really looking forward to sort of reading more about that when the Codex comes out. I'll, um, I think the Blackstone sort of aspect is going to be interesting in game. Um, you know, like what <laughs> they've, they've all got a lump of Blackstone in, in, in their actual bodies. So you know, what what's that going to do? I think they all. Like, I think we're going to sort of see sort of prior abilities or maybe more sort of psychic not board control but more maybe sort of psychic responses from them or maybe they'll be harder to target with psychic I'm just picking out two wires there which seem to stick out of his his arm falling to bits aren't they haha <laughs> and I'm just going to go one more time over the top of that to give it a flat base Okay, so there we go. So that's the black areas all picked out. Okay, so now we're going to let him thoroughly dry, and then we'll come back and uh, and do some final touches to him and get the weapon done. Okay, so the cough strap black has dried, and the first thing we're going to do, the <laughs> first thing we're going to do, is come in on all of these pipes, which are like sort of like what special we putting here? So corrugated, um, and on the um, cabling is actually part of him. Uh, we're just going to give it a quick over top of Mechanica Standard Grey. Now this isn't going to be a full coating. I'm literally just doing like a highlight with this. So a tiny bit on the brush. Onto the palette. And just along that. Just, just to give it a bit of life so to speak. I'm also going to go along that cable. With the same idea. And then underneath him. You can get in there. Just again, it's just, just bringing it to life a little bit, that's all it is. Okay, back of the gun as well. And back of that cable. Okay, so that's our mechanic of standard grey done. Now I'm going to wash the brush off. And then we're going to come in with some Dark Reaper. I really like Dark Reaper on top of Chaos, on top of um, Corvus Black. It just, um, I don't know, I don't know what's the best way of describing it, it just goes. A um, bit of watering with this. And what we're going to do now, we're going to highlight all the, the black stone from the top down. Okay? And then the gun, we're just going to go along top lines, down the side, where it sort of curves up. And then along there a little bit, okay, across the top. I'm not doing the actual sort of shaft, the energy shaft, I'm leaving that. And all will become clear. 
Okay, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a uh, not a non highlight, but it's it's quite subtle, and it just because we don't want it to look grey, but we just want it to look like highlighted black. Okay, that's the top there. So that's Dark Reaper on top of Corvus. <clears throat> While that's dry enough, and that won't take long guys, we're now going to come in with a bit of the fang. <laughs> now, the fang is now going to be our secondary highlight on top of the Dark Reaper. Okay, so again, bit on the brush. And we're just going to go where we had a bit of that reaper, okay. Very top down here. Yeah, I'm just sort of giving it a gentle touch, and it's just going to create that effect of. His weapon isn't necessarily made out of metal. It's another material. Okay. Going over that again. Using the side of the brush here just to get those lines. And then the back of the gun. And this is a really sort of quick and easy way that I use to highlight up my sort of corvus yeah and not forgetting his black stone as well yeah there we go that's sort of one highlighted weapon so that's the black done. Now we're going to pick out the areas that we actually want to be a cool glow. <laughs> and to do that, we need to first put down a base of Corex White. Shaking it really well. I love Corex White, but it seems to be quite a quite a pain to separate. Okay. Bit of water. As all things, and we're just thinking about where we want it to be, be glowing. So, the orbs on the gun, and on the other side. And then his eyes. So, for eyes, get a point on your brush. Take your time. Just dot in. Go back to your palette and just, just twist the brush in the paint. Yeah. Here we go. Now, one thing we might just try and do as well on these is just to give that a, a bit of an interest to it and the reason we're going to do that is because we're going to go over that with the the glow effect paint okay i want these orbs to be quite visually striking so i'm just going to go over the top of them again and then on the other side We might just want to put a brief highlight there. Okay, just to look as if it's pulsing. And that, <coughs> excuse me, at the minute, that will look like, well, what, what are you doing? <laughs> but again, all will become clear. Okay, so. One more time over the top of those. I'm happy with this effect here.
Okay, now we're gonna leave that to dry before we add our glow effect on there. So, if there are any other the other dynasties or any of the other sort of paint schemes you want me to have a look at, um, please let me know. Um, the, the techniques are very, very similar for a lot of it, guys. Um, it's all about getting that base and just, just working your way up. So as you can see, he's looking pretty, pretty cool already. And uh, we now want to make him sort of pop to the next level, so to speak. So a couple of minutes drying time is all that he needs. And then we're going to hit it with some technical Tesseract Glow. Now you can see how much it separates this paint. So we really need to shake that up well. Um, shake all your paints. <laughs> it's the one tip I can give to everybody. Shake your paints and thin your paints. <laughs> So as we shake that up, it starts to mix in the sediment. So I'm gonna come back to you once I've fully mixed that in and he's fully dry, and then we'll do the glow effects and then talk about his base. Okay, so my Tesseract Glow is now nice and nice and mixed, so to speak. <clears throat> Tesseract Glow is a technical paint, so we're not gonna thin this. Uh, we're gonna use it straight out of the pot. And we are literally going to apply this everywhere we, we, we want some sort of glow effect. So on that wire. On the sort of what I imagine is like the power cell. I've been quite generous with it as well. You can sort of apply more than you think of this paint. It's probably the best way to look at it. And then over the top of these balls. And let the paint find its little gullies and so on and so forth, yeah. Let the paint do the work for you here. That's what the technical paints are brilliant for that. Back of the wire. Little touch in there. And into his eyes. So again, I don't want to. I don't want to fully lay it in brush, but I do want enough so that we have an effect. So we've got his eyes. I'm just going to go over the top of his head. Okay. So what we need to do now that we've applied the tesseract glow, we need to let that thoroughly dry. Okay. But can you see under where I've done the sort of different color variations underneath? It sort of makes it look like it's like a pulsating sort of effect. Which is what we're looking for. There, I'm just making sure the paint's gone into the gullies across the top of the gun. Is that? Yeah, and he's coming along nicely. So we're going to let that thoroughly dry. Then we're going to come back and talk about his base. However, what we can do, let me just close up that. He's prepped the base a little bit. So while the test right goes drying, he has this and this warrior has like a rock on his base, and there's also a base trim. So what we're going to do. The rock, we're going to come in with Mechanics Grey again. And we're just going to literally just paint the rock. Okay. And the base trim, which is why I have brought my handy piece of. Uh, rag so to speak him what do you do and call this black so one like tip when you sort of i'm sorry when you're sort of army building so to speak while one stage is drying if you can do another stage on your miniature do it all around the edge of the base So obviously we've been dry brushing this miniature and doing various other things to it, okay? Stand him down on the pad. Close our paints up and we'll let him dry, but he's uh, he's coming along nicely, as you can see. 
and hopefully it'll look pretty cool. I'll come back to you in a minute. Okay, so we're now on to basing our miniature. Um, so there's a few stages that we're going to do here. Uh, we're going to first off provide a texture with some Vallejo textured earth. When that's thoroughly dry, we're going to come in with a Mechanica standard grey dry brush. Then we're going to go in with a lighter Corex white dry brush. And then we're going to wash the top of the whole base with our Grix Earth Shade before finishing off with your tufts of choice. Okay. So our uh, textured air paint is it's, it's an interesting quick way of texturing up a base. Um, a word of warning, this stuff does annihilate brushes. Um, so always use an old brush. Okay, it's like a... A clart is probably the best way of sort of describing it. Um, it's like a goo, a gunk. Um, and I just use it to texture on bases because it's super quick. Um, all we do, put it on a very old brush here, uh, spread it about, and just, just undulate it across the top of the base. Um, it's already black, which is great. And just spread it about. I'm, I'm literally using like a 50p brush here. Um, there's not no need for super expensive stuff. You can get little spatulas and things like that, which is great, but I like the control that a, a sort of cheaper brush gives me. Here we go. So now that obviously needs to dry. It'll take about half an hour to dry guys that, so we'll come back to you once we're ready to do the next stage. So the base is fully dry now, so we're going to give it two layers of dry brushing. Uh, really simple. I'm going to start with uh, Mechanica Standard Grey. Give it a bit of a shade. Got my small dry brush. My long serving small dry brush. Work it into the fibres. And then just across the top. Okay. The texture in the paint itself, the sort of the Vallejo stuff that we've put on, does a lot of work for us. Okay, that's it. That'll dry relatively <clears throat> quickly. So while it's drying, we'll shake up our our white. And what we're doing here, we're using Corax white. Okay, it'll go sort of grey colour, but again, it's just to get that that difference that undulation underneath okay so I'm going over the Corax okay I'll wash the brush off and then we'll <coughs> let those two layers dry which won't take a great deal because it's only a sort of fine dry brush and then we're going to go over the top of that with our Grex Air Shade. What that does, again, it just ties it all together. Gives it that sort of real ground look, so to speak. So, let's shake up our wash. I'm not going to dilute this wash. I'm going to go straight out of the pot with it. Okay, so a fair amount on the brush. Over the top and the little rock on his base. Yeah, it don't matter if we get a little bit on his feet, because at the end of the day he's trudging through it all, isn't he? Okay, so that's the Agrax down. Now we're going to let that thoroughly dry. We'll finish off with Tuft, and our warrior is complete. And there we go. So that's a nice sort of like textured multiple coloured base, just with a couple of dry brushes and a wash. So we're going to finish him off just with Tuft. I'm uh, using Army Paint and Wasteland Tufts on the guys, and the easiest way for that is you just get your PVA glue. You, you can get like branded ones and all this sort of thing, guys, but you know, like this great canister of glue was, was £2. <laughs> Tiniest little bit. Old brush again. Okay. I use an old brush just because it gives you that, that control as to where your glue's going. And I think for this guy, we'll put one big tuft on him. Okay, so we'll put one big tuft. In the middle, so dab a glue. Take your tuft off. Lay it down. And tap it down. There you go. 
one completed size of can dynasty necron warrior so i hope you've enjoyed the video um anything any any tips you've picked up is all, always good uh, please like comment subscribe and uh, i'll be back with more painting soon happy hopping